there's this one food that you need to be aware of that has the potential to completely nullify any help from the top three nutrients in supporting your immune system. I'm talking about vitamin D help. I'm talking about vitamin C help and zinc help. These three nutrients are the nutrients that most people take when they're coming down with some type of infection. So they're very, very important in helping your immune system. And I'm going to tell you the one food that can cause a deficiency in all three of these nutrients and negatively affect your immune system. Your immune system is dependent on these three nutrients. So let's first talk about vitamin D. Is vitamin D important with your immune system? Uh, yes, it's involved with every single part of your immune system, your T cells, your B cells, your phagocytes, the neutrophils, every single part of your immune system has vitamin D receptors. And when someone has an inflammatory condition called the cytokine storm, uh, vitamin D is essential in keeping that inflammation regulated. So vitamin D helps modulate or regulate the immune system. Vitamin D also minimizes the collateral damage from pathogens, especially viruses. So without vitamin D, you have a much longer infection and you have a lot of other complications. All right, the next one is vitamin C, right? You know vitamin C is important. Probably at the first sign of a cold, you might take vitamin C. What does vitamin C do to the immune system? Well, number one, it increases the mobility of white blood cells. It makes them more active. And without vitamin C, they're very sluggish. Vitamin C also increases something called phagocytosis. That's the ability of phagocytes to eat up pathogens. Vitamin C also helps the white blood cells produce their weaponry to defend against infections. And without vitamin C, the duration of your illness extends a lot longer than it should. Even if you took the amount of vitamin C in your blood and compared it to the vitamin C in the white blood cell, the vitamin C in the white blood cell is a hundred times more than in the blood. Why? Because your immune system is dependent on vitamin C. All right, now what about the trace mineral zinc? Is that important? It's very, very important. In fact, without zinc, your thymus gland, the gland that trains your T cells, it's like a training camp for T cells, atrophies, it shrinks. Zinc is vitally important, not just with the thymus gland, but for all the lymphatic tissue, the lymph nodes in general. Without zinc, you're not gonna have the quantity of white blood cells. And without zinc, the duration of infection goes on and on and on. When people suffer from a lot of symptoms from interaction with a virus, for example, and they have all these complications, it's really the immune reaction towards the pathogen that's creating the damage more than the pathogen itself. And it's these three nutrients that minimize the collateral damage. So if you want to go through an infection with minimal symptoms, these three nutrients are crucial. All right. So what is the food that we need to avoid? If you guessed sugar, you are correct. Now let's just take first vitamin C. The chemistry of vitamin C is very, very similar to sugar. Okay. If you're consuming sugar and vitamin C at the same time, the body will always take on the sugar before vitamin C, leaving you high and dry or deficient of vitamin C. Diabetics that have this sustained blood sugar nearly always have a vitamin C deficiency. And when you're deficient in vitamin C, another symptom you might get is bleeding gums, fatigue, collagen problems, but mainly it's gonna be a weakened immune system. All right, what about vitamin D? Well, when you're consuming sugar, the absorption of vitamin D goes way down. Sugar also impairs the activation of vitamin D. So if you go from inactive vitamin D to active vitamin D, you need help from your kidney. But sugar gets in the way of that. Sugar interferes with that activation of vitamin D. And the third thing that sugar does to vitamin D is it stops the synthesis or production of vitamin D. You can't really produce vitamin D if there's too much sugar in the body. This is why diabetics 
are nearly always low in vitamin D. And if you consume a lot of sugar, that turns into liver fat, and that also can inhibit the activation and absorption of vitamin D from another angle. All right, now let's talk about zinc. Sugar causes excessive amount of zinc to be excreted from your kidneys. And that's called hyperzincuria, too much zinc in the urine. That comes from too much sugar. Sugar also impairs the absorption of zinc. So this is another reason why people that are diabetics are nearly always deficient in zinc. Zinc is also really important in supporting the beta cell in the pancreas, the cell that makes insulin that then regulates blood sugars. And that goes the same with vitamin D as well. Vitamin D is very, very important in protecting you against developing diabetes. So not only does sugar deplete vitamin D, but low vitamin D can activate or increase your risk of getting diabetes. Now, when I'm talking about sugar, I'm not just talking about sugar. I'm talking about other things that turn into sugar pretty quickly, like refined carbohydrates. Refined carbohydrates, like in grains, are also uh, loaded with phytates, which then can also block zinc. So as you can see, when you're doing too many carbs, too many sugars, um, your immune system is going to greatly suffer. All right, so where do you get vitamin C? The best source is sauerkraut. Okay, sauerkraut per cup. If you get a really good blend of sauerkraut, that's maybe from the health food store or the farmer's market, or you make it yourself, per cup, it's about 700 milligrams. Now, the RDA is only 70. So we're getting 700, 10 times more than the RDA. So that's why you want to have sauerkraut to get your vitamin C, or you can get it from bell peppers and you can get it from leafy greens. All right, vitamin D, difficult to get it from foods. You want to get it from the sun. Um, if, if it's winter time, then take it as a supplement. But like I said before, uh, vitamin D and zinc are really, really important um, if you're a diabetic or you're trying to repair the damage from being a diabetic. And as far as zinc goes, zinc is uh, high in red meat. It's also high in shellfish and seafood. Now, there's this one last thing I want to tell you, something else that can paralyze your immune system that is not food and it's stress. Cortisol from stress paralyzes your immune system. So the two worst things for your immune system is stress and sugar. On that note, I want to show you a video how you can make your own vitamin D supplements. Check it out. I put it right here.